Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and I'm going to be going over the UFC card from Paris for uh, tomorrow from a betting perspective. And for those of you that have not uh, been with us yet, this is a very contrarian approach to uh, uh, to wagering in general, which reflects the way I think about all types of wagering, whether it be MMA, sports betting, or the main source of my income, which has been managing a hedge fund for the last 20 years. And the idea is that uh, we don't try to out-analyze the entire MMA betting population. What we attempt to do is figure out where the public is, where the narratives are, where the biases are, and essentially try to fade them. The idea is that it's specifically in MMA, it's a it's a it's it's a sport that's filled with chaos, yet there's so much it's the best way to describe it is so much groupthink that settles on very binary outcomes, whether it be if X is going to win, it's going to be because of this, or if Y is going to win, it's because of this. And those types of narratives usually result in overvalued spots. So when you approach it from a prop betting perspective, whenever you have a, um, a path, which is such an easy story to tell, those are usually the types of, of bets you're supposed to fade. Um, not that they're less likely to come in, but they're usually overvalued relative to their chances of coming in, specifically in a sport like MMA. Um, we could talk about the stock market another day, but again, it's very, very similar. When you have a stock that is, or a company, whatever, that is re represents a very easy story to tell that, you know, that they're the leader in their space, they have a good balance sheet, they have this, this, this. If it's that easy of a story to tell, I promise you it's overpriced. That's just the way that's just the way it is because people bet based on 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 perception they base they bet based on biases and they bet based on simplicity i mean if such as if something is an easy story to support then that's where people are going to put their money and that's the way that's what comes that's comes uh, that comes uh that's what i'm looking for that comes to light in all forms of wagering and mma i found is is, is a sport that's ripe for that type of analysis so We've been doing this for several months now, and we've been having a lot of success. And forget the actual results of the wagering. Um, I, I hope that what this is doing is teaching you guys to be just much sharper at these types of things. Um, once you get used to analyzing fights in this way, as opposed to just listening to what everybody says, just piling on the same narrative, it's just going to make you just a, a more... I don't want to say more intelligent person. That's a little bit too, too egotistical to say that, but but at least a at least someone who thinks about things in a in a sharper way. So let's go. Let's get right into it. And again, this is not a DFS breakdown. That's completely separate. Um, and we're going to be doing that uh, a little out of order. We're going to be doing DFS a little bit later today. But you have this card from Paris, which has a lot of variance in general because you have these local fighters. You have uh, who have not really. Uh, put forth that many fights that people can analyze. So there's a lot of variance in these lines. I think these lines are very fragile like they were probably last week. Um, but yet still, you know, groupthink is very powerful and they just come to this one conclusion based on mostly what other, other people have said, okay? As opposed to actually analyzing these fights. So um, this, this card is gonna be pretty wild from a just consensus perspective. I can't imagine how there's been such consensus on so many of these fights, considering how much variance there is in when you have the, all these foreign fighters getting together and from different promotions and things like that. So we're going to be on some probably some pretty funny stuff today. But let's go over the rules. Uh, you have 11 fights here. And what we're going to be doing is betting one thing every single fight, whether it be a prop bet, whether it be a money line bet. And we are going to be betting every single fight. Now, again, that's not the best money management system in the world, but I don't care. Uh, we're also going to be betting one unit on every single fight. And for me, one unit is $180. And that's not changing anytime soon. And one unit every fight, is that's probably not a great money management system either. But again, I don't care. We're doing this, yes, for fun. But we're also doing this, again, just to kind of teach you the process of 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 being contrary we're not this is not a, a this is not a bankroll management show this is not a portfolio of a bets management show this is just how to analyze these fights from a contrarian perspective and we are going to bet every single one of them now the other thing is that because we're going to probably be on some kind of fun stuff that doesn't have 
that great of a chance to win. Um, we are going to reserve the main event to get all of our money back. So we're going to presume that the first 10 fights we're just going to lose. And the rule is that for the main event, we have to bet something that is going to be paying at least 10 to 1. Okay. Um, and it's what I like to do, and it's just kind of a fun sweat. So uh, let's just get right into it. And the first fight, and we're going to see me, by the way, you're going to see me bet these right here live, presuming that Zoom uh, and DraftKings work well together. Sometimes DraftKings just doesn't like Zoom very much, and it makes me re-log in, in which case it will be done after uh, we, we close this out. Anyway, uh, first fight of the night, we have Zara Farron versus Jacqueline Cavalcante. And essentially... You know, Zara Fair has got to be uh, just the worst fighter in the in the United States, and 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 in France, and in Mexico, and in Ecuador, and everywhere. I mean, this is a fighter that just people say she's really bad, you know, without really actually knowing if she's really bad. The fact is, she is in the UFC, and she does have some skills. Whether whether she's not quote unquote good or not is is not even relevant, really. Um, because she's fighting someone who hasn't really done much either. You know, you have a French fighter who's fought basically, basically nobody. And yet everybody's just piling on the fact that Farron's ter terrible, Farron's terrible, Farron's terrible. And without actually analyzing whether she is a decent matchup with Cavalcanti, without actually analyzing whether maybe, maybe in her last fight, she made some improvements. I mean, I've heard that take only a couple of times though. And I will say this, for a minus 380 or a plus 300, I think that the amount of people who are betting Jacqueline is probably about 20 to 1. And I don't even mean, well, I shouldn't say that. I shouldn't say people betting her. I'm saying people picking her. You would think that if it's a minus 380, plus 300, that you get at least like a 3 to 1 ratio of people that are picking uh, at least a 1 to 3 with people that are playing DeSantos. But I'm getting no fair picks at all. As a matter of fact, that's not true. Like one one uh, uh, podcast I listened to came up with Farron, but that was at the very beginning of the week. And since then, even then, everybody's changing their mind and they're like, well, you know, we're not going to deal with Farron. Um, so I don't know what to tell you, but we're going to try it. Uh, we're going to take Farron plus the 300 for 180. Fareed Basharad versus Clayton Rodriguez. So this is uh, the the consensus is pretty pretty clear on this one. You know, Basharad has a very very has an edge pretty much everywhere. He's got good body kicks. He's got he's got a lot of takedown upside. Um, and Rodriguez is pretty overmatched here. And once again, whenever you have these these brothers, you have like the Basharad brothers, you have the Bonfim brothers. What ends up happening is is they get a lot more love or a lot more hate depending on whether they're good or bad like if it's a bad group like the koski brothers they'll hate them you know if it's like the nunez not the nunez there was another example as well so basharats because you've had a chance to, to to bet on them probably like twice as often because you can bet on either jared or faris i think both of them are just probably a little bit over overvalued in general um, but nonetheless, I mean, he's going to have a big takedown advantage over Rodriguez, and he's probably going to just grind him out, maybe a, either a round two or three finish or a decision. So those are the things that we can't bet. Like, we can't bet Basharad. We can't, and if we want to play him in a prop instead, we really can't play him in, in, round, in round three, can't really play him round two, can't really play him by decision. The only thing you could do, really, if you want to be on the other side of consensus here, you could play Basharat in round one, because that's actually a result that people are not really not really uh, uh, paying attention to. Um, or you could just play Rodriguez. So let's just take a look and see the different lines here. Um, let's see. Rodriguez in round one is going to be plus 1,200. Wow. Oh, that's in... in um, it's got to be actually in KO. So let's just see by anything in round one. Well, by submission in round one, he's plus 650. So that's probably more likely. So let's just see what he is in round one in general. Let's see, round props. Faris in round one is plus 450. Um, Yeah, let's try that. It's a better line than Farid, than, than uh, Rodriguez um, uh, by decision. 
uh, excuse me, uh, by Rodriguez in general. So let's just play Faris uh, Basharat, uh, round one plus 450. I think this is the undervalued piece. The fact is, he is a really, really big favorite. If he's that big of a favorite, maybe he just runs him over in round one. Um, I've heard that the Rodriguez is pretty aggressive. So if he, if he wants to be aggressive, it puts himself more at risk for getting knocked out in the first round. So we're going to take Basharat round one plus 450 for 180. All right, this next one is just pretty easy. You have Nora Cornell, Cornole, whatever, versus Jocelyn Edwards. I mean, this is a pick em fight where about 75, about 90% of the community is on Jocelyn Edwards because, you know, she she's has the experience. She doesn't have a lot of upside, but she's just, you know, just more technically sound. This Nora Cornole is just kind of this French bum who's just fought like worse fighters, you know? And so, um, the weird thing, though, is that there's a uh, is the inside the distance line is surprisingly tight. Um, I don't want to say tight; it's surprisingly uh, surprisingly wide uh, with respect to finishing early. Like these 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 women fighters usually are expected to finish uh, to go the distance, but for whatever reason, this inside the distance line is only well two and a half is over two and a half is minus one ninety. That's so interesting because the inside the distance line. Let me just see this. Doesn't it, oh, to go the distance is to go. This is only minus one fifty. I mean, that seems like almost a sucker bet because these guy fights always go the distance. So I have a feeling there's some weird upside for finishing here, and so I'm going to take a shot at Cornole inside the distance. It's kind of like double. I don't know. This it's probably not a great line, but because it's kind of like a a bad line, it's almost something you have to bet. You know, it's like almost like trappy to bet this thing inside the distance. So we're gonna go double leverage. We're gonna go against Edwards and we're gonna go Cornoli and we're gonna go inside the distance. So how do we get there? Cornoli inside the distance has got to be pretty big, right? Cornoli by TKO or submission is actually only plus 225. That is such a terrible line. It just has to work. So that's what we're going to do. Cornoli, we are we got to be the only people doing this, right? Because one thing about, you, you'll hear about uh, Jocelyn Edwards. She might not be that great, but nobody ever finishes her. So we're, we're going to take, we're going to take the French, the French fighter again, who's fought nobody to, to submit or knock out someone who never gets finished at a bad line. I mean, how, how much better is it going to be? All right. Um, moving on, we have Ange Luce versus Reese McKee. Um, I got to tell you, I was expecting the, the the public to be a little different on this one. Because I'll tell, I might end up being a sucker here because, I mean, I watched both of these fighters last fights, Luce and McKee's, and these guys just bring it, okay? Um, neither of them defend themselves particularly well. And they just freaking bring it. So I was expecting all kinds of action on, on, on fight doesn't go, whatever. But people are really into this idea that Angelus is just kind of you know, wrestle or control this fight to the end. And I'm hearing a lot of love for the overs or something like that. So we're, we're not doing any of that. We're, we're going to bet this thing. We're going to bet this thing to finish early. And it's a question of, of whether we want to be really greedy and play one of these fighters to finish early or if we just want to play the fight inside the distance. So I think I'm going to get, it's going to be a little wimpy. I'm just going to bet this fight to, to, uh, to finish. Um, let's just see. Uh, fight lines. Let's see. Inside the distance. Let's see. How do we find that? Fight props. Fight to go the distance. No. Minus 110. It just seems so wimpy, but I, I don't know. Um, I will say this, that I was about to say that there's a, that, that maybe I should play McKee as more of a contrarian, but you're seeing a little bit of McKee love too. This is probably the, the most wimpy bet I'm going to make today, but we're going to expect this fight to, oh, to, to not go the distance. All right. Uh, moving on, we have um, Taylor Lapolis versus uh, uh, Lachwin. And this was one of the fights just got shuffled. 
and you had two fighters that had fighters drop out and so they just paired them against each other and this was really really strange so you had Lachlan who was going everybody was going to be picking him to just kind of run over some dude you know he was going to be like the great pick of the week and then they, they knocked him out and so now Lapalus is all of a sudden being thrown in as this guy who's this 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 world champion and and Lachlan ha- kind of has no chance here I mean I don't see I don't know why I say I don't see the difference but it's amazing the way everybody just kind of turned on a dime here. So we're just going to take Lofgren plus the 145. I mean, if we were really, as a matter of fact, we, we can't do that. We got to play him inside the distance. So let's just see what this is. Lofgren inside the distance. Let's see. Uh, winning method. We got to do like my second chance, right? Yeah. So we will do Lofgren by TK or submission plus 300. We will take a shot. All right, moving on. We have uh, Morgan Charrier versus Manolo Zucchini. Okay, I, I actually have an opinion on this one. Morgan Charrier, he's he's pretty good, but he's very low volume, and that's kind of his problem. All right, and slowly but surely, you get a little bit of love for a little bit of love for the underdog here. But one thing that you, that you are hearing a lot of is that Charrier probably is just a little bit too low volume to get a finish. So we are going to be on the Sherry Air uh, inside the distance line. And if we really want to be extreme, we'll just play him in round one. So I think that's what we're going to do. So Morgan Sherry Air, round one. Let's do this again. Uh, I don't know whether it's going to be TKO or submission. So we'll just going to – we'll just play him in the round. Round prop. Morgan Sherry Air, round one, plus 240 for one. All right. Um, moving on, we have William Gomis versus Yanis Gamore. So William Gomis, uh, he's another one they they kind of like swapped fights, and he's just kind of known as I want to say kind of known his last fight. He just kind of kept Francis Marshall at bay. So he's very long. He's a rangy type of fighter. Doesn't have a lot of finishing upside, but the idea is that he's probably just going to kind of grind out a decision here. And this is another one where because they reshuffle these fights, you're getting a you know some amount of love kind of on the underdog here. Everybody kind of wants to fade William Gomes because in his last fight, it was a real boring fight. Some people might have thought he lost. So we're just going ahead and we'll take Gomes inside the distance. Uh, let's take a look and see what these, what these uh, lines are. Gomes inside the distance is where it is here. Where is it? By KO or wait, Gomis by KO or submission plus 275. It's good enough for me. Gomis inside the distance plus 275 uh, for 180. All right, um, moving on. Volkan Olsdemir versus Bogdan Guskov. Um, you know. Ozdemir is 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 kind of on the decline. I'm hearing. I'm getting all kinds of 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 Buskov as as far as being really really aggressive here. Um, I'm I'm getting some love for the Ozdemir inside the distance line too. So there's not there's not a lot of consensus. Um. The only thing you can really bet here to be contrarian, and I think that's what I'm going to probably end up doing, is probably Guskov by decision. Okay, because all I'm hearing is that Guskov, if he's going to win, it's just because he's going to bring it, and he's going to be really, really aggressive. Um, where I am hearing that Ozdemir has several paths to victory, whether it be early or late. So what we could either do is play Gustav by decision, or if you want, we could just play the over. Seems so wimpy though. Let's just take a look. Let's see. Let's see the fight lines. What is the over two and a half? Oh, wrong fight. Sorry. Ozdemir Buskov over over one and a half is plus one sixty. All right, we're gonna do an alt line here. Let's go. Let's see what over two and a half is. Um, can we do an alt line? Fight lines. 
alternative total rounds, let's see. Um, over two and a half, you get plus 255. All right, we're going to do that. Over two and a half, plus 255 in the Ozdemir fight. Sounds good to me. The idea is that Ozdemir he has two paths of victory, but Guskov only has one. So this is probably only like two thirds contrarian. It's not full full on. If I really wanted to have some some cojones, I'd play Guskov just by decision. But we'll just split the over here, um, over two and a half, plus two fifty. Um, all right, Benoit Saint Denis versus Tiago Moises. So this is this is <laughs> this is another example of where people just just love to just use the use the phrase recency bias without actually knowing what it means. What people are saying is, wow, Benoit St. Denis was plus 250 in his last fight. Now he's minus 150? That's, that's recency bias, man. We got to go. The, we, we can't play him at minus 155. We should have played him plus 250. But, you know, that's not the way life works here. You know, and, and throughout the course of the week, and I knew this was going to happen, is that Moises was going to get all this love from these people that, that, that um, have a lot of respect for the more, not the more veteran, but the, I don't know, the more established guy who's not quite as as wild as the other dude. And, you know, this is just a classic situation. of You know what this reminds me of? This reminds me of the, um, of the uh, what's his name? Duplessis against Whitaker. Like Duplessis was, came in as an, un, he was an underdog. Was under, and then he went up against uh, Whitaker and they said, well, this is where it's going to stop. But in that case, Whitaker was actually still the favorite. Here, Benoit St. Denis, is is now the is now the favorite? Actually, Duplessis was the underdog. Benoit Saint is now the favorite, and all the the the, the sharp wise guys are playing Moises. Um, uh, no thanks. I mean, we're just gonna do. We're gonna take Saint Denis inside the distance, and you know we're gonna fade the recency bias guys. You know, so let's just see. Benoit Saint Denis. Let's see. Winning method. Uh, by TKO or submission plus 140. That's all you get. You know what? Well, we gotta be we gotta do be a little more. We gotta be a little more aggressive than that. We got we gotta pick a round here. But the thing is, is that what what round do we pick? You're, you're hearing some people that are picking Saint Denis. You're seeing you're seeing that he might grind to a decision. You might see a round two, round three. What about Saint Denis in round one? That would be pretty legendary if we could pull that off. All right, why not? Let's do it. Santini round one is only plus 275. Boy, that is brutal. That is just brutal. Ugh. This 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 feels so dirty, but we're gonna do it. Santini round one against the established guy, and this is never winning, but we're gonna do it anyway. I, um, moving on, just a couple more, right? Yeah, so we have Menon Firo versus Rosenau Mayunis, and and this is I'm just shocked. I'm I'm literally shocked because I am completely betting the exact opposite of what I thought I was going to bet. I was one hundred percent sure going into this week that. The entire Twitter sphere and MMA sphere, whatever, was going to be all over Rose Nama Yunus because they always are. I mean, she's really well loved, but I guess, I guess because she really laid an egg in that her last fight that people could bet on that against um, the Sparza, they completely turned, and all of a sudden Fiero is is the second coming of whatever, and and you're getting Rose Nama Yunus as a dog with very few people actually picking her to win. So uh, I, I'm in there. As a matter of fact, I, I, I really have a right mind to play her inside the distance just for funsies. Well, let's just see what these lines are. I mean, I should probably just take the plus 164. I mean, I mean, I'm you, if you look, <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know what to tell you. Rose plus 164, or again, if we want to be really, really nasty. Actually, we can't play her inside the distance because – People still have that thought of her knocking out Zay Wee Lang really, really quickly. So it's probably a little bit of 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 
uh, a bias into that one. So let's just take Rose just plus the 164 this way. If she does get the KO, we're fine. And if she wins by decision plus 330, we're fine. So let's take Rose plus the 164 for one. All right, so we've really outdone ourselves here. We've made 10 bets that are just totally hopeless. Uh, starting with Zara Fair. Yeah, good luck with that. She's the worst. Basharat is going to just kind of wear this dude down in round two or three. Maybe get a decision. Never going to run through him in round one. So we'll lose that one. Nora Cornell, by dis by, in, in an MMA fight against someone who's never been submitted, all she's fought is basically gas cans her whole career. And we're going to better inside the distance and a terrible line. Well, let's try it. Um, Luce McKee, uh, inside going, uh, finish inside the distance, as opposed to Lusa probably grinding him out, which is what people are predicting. Lofren, uh, plus 300 against all of a sudden Tara Lapalus. Now they switch this fight. Tara Lapalus has this big style edge over him, I guess. But, well, we're kind of plus 300 inside the distance. Morgan Charrier, pretty low volume. So to play him around one is probably asking for trouble. So we asked for trouble. William Gomez, same thing. Rangy striker who probably got away with a tough decision in his last fight. Um, pretty close one. There's no way he's getting getting this this out getting a finish here. So we'll lose this one plus two seventy five. Ozdemir Bogdan, I mean plus two fifty five over two and a half. We actually bought an extra round here. Who does that? Uh, Santini. We're going into this recency bias thing. You know, we're we're, we're how are we betting a guy at, where he was plus two fifty in his last fight? Now he's minus one fifty. It's actually Tago Moigas. We got it out of our minds, and we have to knock him out. We got to get him out in the first round. So we're gonna lose that. Uh, Mano Fioro is obviously a much bigger, better striker. And Rose is basically done. I mean, she put on the worst performance like ever against Asparza. Then she got uh, submitted by Jillian Robertson in a grappling match in like 45 seconds. I mean, she is finished. I don't know where her head is at. So where her head is at is losing losing to us, is losing for us. So we're going to be 0-10 going into the main event. So we have to figure out what to do in this main event where we can get 11-1 to and make up for these atrocious wagers even though they're contrarian, um, that we uh, that we made earlier. So this, to me, is is the most binary fight in the world, right? If Spivak can take him down, he's going to win, okay? If God can avoid the takedowns, he is going to win, okay? Now, so it's either basically God by KO, some variations of gone by decision. You could have Spivak by submission because he gets the takedowns and some variations of Spivak by KO. Okay. So what are we left with? Well, if we want to get 11 to one, the good thing is I got a couple of things. We could always go for a particular round, but there are two outcomes which have been completely dismissed, which I think are very reasonable. Number one is, uh, is Spivak by decision, right? It doesn't seem like something that should work, okay? But there are this fight could play out in the clinch. And you think that you don't want to give a decision to a non-French fighter if it gets that way. But trust me, if Spivak fights a boring fight and the fans are booing, believe me, they're going to find a way to give that to Spivak. And the other thing you could do is you can play God by submission, okay? And the way that could work is that Spivak keeps trying for these takedowns and eventually he just kind of runs out of gas doing that. And that this gets to the ground the wrong way. It's possible Gan gets the, kind of the hero submission. So it's either going to be Spivak by decision, Gan by submission, or a particular round. So let's take a look at some of these odds. Uh, Gan by submission plus 800. Uh, sorry, that's not going to be big enough. And we have Spivak by decision is plus 800. So unfortunately, we can't bet either of those things. So we have to go to a particular round. So what we can do, again, is we can, I mean, this is probably asking for it, but what if we did, like, gone by submission in a particular round? Like, that would be pretty freaking cool, okay? So if you went gone by submission, in round one, that would be plus 1,600, okay? What about just a regular particular round without a particular um, uh, method? Let's see if we can get to 11 to one that way. 
Yeah, this looks actually kind of the way you have to do this. You could play something like Gone in round four plus 1,400. I think that makes the most sense as opposed to trying to get a particular finish in a particular round. So we can go Gone plus 1,400 in round four. I think that's a little bit better than something like Spivak in round three. So let's just do that. Gone round four plus one eight. Um, and this, I think, is the, is the least likely outcome predicted by everybody because you are seeing some gone by decision stuff. And obviously, you know, early makes sense and speed back early makes sense. So I think gone in, in, in rounds four or five makes sense. And I just don't see speed back making it, to, making it to a fifth round unless he's kind of winning. You know what I mean? So uh, gone round four plus 180. And we we're going to bet all these things. Let's see if we can't. Get this in right away. Boom. Now nah, I see it's going to make me log off and back in. But okay, uh, that'll do it. Good luck, everybody. And uh, again, I apologize for going, probably going on 11 this week, but at least you guys learned something. Bye bye.